Hello everyone, my name is Adrian Martinez and in this tutorial I will show you how to do a resource estimation with uh, PyGSLib. Go to the uh, user manual and uh, in the tutorial page you may download the demo file which is a zip um, file. Say the zip file anywhere in your computer and unpack the zip file go to the uh, folder and in there you have csv files and the ipython notebook and also the domain uh, where we will do the estimation open a terminal in this working folder and type ipython notebook this will open the um, ipython notebook in your browser Open the tutorial. Um, we clear all the output and we're ready to go. The first thing you have to do is to import the third party libraries we will use in this tutorial and, and PyGSL uh, library itself. Now we need to load the drill hole tables in pandas and data frames the three whole tables are a caller um, we also have a side table and a survey table so we import the three whole tables and now we get access uh, to some of the properties we can plot the tables in our browser and uh, we can also uh, drop some columns and in this case we are uh, assigning zeros to non assign interval now we create a drill hole object as you can see here the drill hole object consists of a caller and survey table and in a second common you add as many interval tables uh, you want this can be uh, oops sorry this can be um, a side table or lithology table uh, rqd table or any uh, other interval table So we run this and we get a complaint and this is because there is no land in uh, the color table. We validate now the drill hole object and we see that we get another error and this is because we have only one survey interval in some drill holes. We fix it with the command fix survey in one interval error and we validate it again and we see that it works okay now. Now we add the assay table and we're ready to uh, compose it. To composite, uh, we first calculate the um, length of the intervals and we plot a histogram of lengths using pandas. So let's create this and we see that most uh, intervals are 10 feet length. Then we composite using um, 10 feet length and that's create, creating a new table and name it CMP. Now we're ready to the survey, and um, the survey will create us a new table named CMP with a coordinate of the intervals, including coordinate and endpoint and orientation of the interval. Uh, now we create the borehole ID of the type integers that's required for some application using Fortran code, and as we can see, we have numeric ID uh, for each real hole. We can see that um, in the color ta table as well. So let's add mm, new cell and plot the first line of the color table. And you can see each uh, drill hole has its numeric ID. To see the result of everything we did in now, till now, we export our drill hole uh, to a 
file with BTK format and we can plot it with uh, Paraview. Just drag this new created file on top of Paraview, apply OK and we see the drill hole traces. Now we can um, add the filter to to see uh, pipes instead of line. We apply it. Looks much better now, and we will color by a, a copper gray. So let's edit a bit the color scale. Put one decimal place. And okay, and then the interval from zero to one, and we see now that. We have very well defined a mineralized zone. We can select one of the intervals and we can see the values of these selected intervals um, by filtering out the non selected uh, rows. So, this is a very uh, handy uh, viewer. All Interval tables in a drill hole object are stored in the Python dictionary. Let's show this. Okay, each key has a table table name and table data. So the table data is stored in pandas data frame, as we can see now. Okay, so we can use the command to CSV to export the data to CSV uh, format. And as you can see, now we're ready to go and code the uh, samples per domain. So we have a domain wireframe, name it domain uh, STL, um, to visualize this domain just drag this file on top of Paraview and you can see the uh, wireframe now. Uh, by the way, this wireframe was created with uh, uh, indicator categorical creation using the PyG slide. So let's do a section now. We're doing a section in Paraview. First, we do the section uh, on top of the wireframe. And now we do a section, we copy the properties on top of the drill holes and we can see now, uh, let's fix the color scale, okay? Now, we can see uh, demineralized samples. And we want to tag all these samples inside the wireframe uh, as um, mineralized domain. Okay. Good. Now it's better. Now we will use BTK, um, the BTK class, to select all the sample interval inside the wireframe, and we will assign those samples uh, as domain. We run the tag, and we see that everything was tagged in a new domain. We export everything again to BTK and CSV format, and we're ready to go back to Paraview load the file again and we will repeat the entire process so we basically have to create a two filter now apply clipping by the way you can uh, tag samples with open and close surface Okay, let's change the colors colors now. Assign the color per domain. Now we apply color per domain. And as you can see, the samples were that properly. We're ready now to uh, create a block model and populate uh, this domain with blocks. So the first thing we do is just define the block model parameters and we create a block model object. And we fill a wireframe with blocks. This creates an in 
field, but we rename it to D1. To create a partial model, we remove all the blocks with zero percentage inside the wireframe. Now we can um, export the model to a BDK unit structure grid and load it into Paraview as you can see in this example. So I am doing um, some clipping. And what we can see here is the percentage of the block inside the wireframe that was calculated by a uh, fill uh, with uh, a wireframe uh, with blocks function and uh, apparently works very nice but only if the wireframe is closed. If the wireframe is not closed you may ha get unexpected results. Okay. So as we can see here, um, blocks touching the wireframe are exported as well, but with less percentage inside the domain. Now we do some stat. First we do the clustering. To do that we define a the clustering parameter in a dictionary. This is a dictionary and we pass the dictionary parameters to the function the class and then we plot. Okay, that generate a set of plots. From the set of plots we pick a cell size and we redefine the decluster in and parameters and we run the decluster program again. So let's run the plots again. We select thousand and hundred in the vertical and only one block size and we calculate the uh, the cluster mean. Now we're ready to go, to go and do the uh, estimate with Krijin. To es do estimate with Krijin, we define this large uh, dictionary. We set the input only one block using AJK um, parameters. Let's see this block with this block ID number. And we see the block here. Okay, we will do uh, the estimate only in this block. Let's remove all the other files and put the drill holes around that block. We will use only mineralized samples, so we apply a filter to hide the other samples. Oh, everything with domain code equal to one. So those are the samples we will use to estimate in this block. And the objective here is to test the estimate only in one block and then we proceed and do the estimate on all other blocks. We run the Krijin program and as you can see in the output, because we are using the book equal, equal to one, we get a set of outputs. We export the um, Krijin information to the file and then we can uh, load the um, search ellipsoid as we can see here, let's make it transparent. And the points, we also have the points um, selected in the estimation. As you can see, this is a CSV file, but we can convert it to point with a filter table, table to point. Color it. Then with uh, creating weights, and those tiny points we can convert it to point Gaussian. Uh, this will create tiny spheres with radius uh, 6. And now we review the um, weights and samples used in this estimation. And um, let's improve color scale. So we review the weights, uh, the weight distribution and sample selected and uh, we decide if keep going or not with these estimation parameters. And once we're happy with these estimation parameters, then we can run the estimation in all the blocks in our block model. So let's assume we're happy 
So we go back and do the estimation, all estimation parameters that uh, redefine the debug equal to zero and input coordinates um, before we had only one using the filter. Now are all the coordinates and the estimate uh, will be run in next uh, cell. Running the estimate, it takes a long time. You can see the progress in the common window. And after it finish, we export then the entire block model again, and we're ready to go and do a visual validation of the estimate itself. So let's play a trick. We reload the model in place. Now we can assign color and define the color from zero to one and plot copper grade composites and review the results. You may repeat this process in many sections. Uh, basically, let's create a section and check the correspondence between the real hole estimate, sorry, the block estimate and the real hole data. Uh, this is one of the most basic um, validations you may run. We may also compare the means in block model with mean in drill hole, included the cluster mean. Now, if you have to re uh, run a resource estimate in a different deposit, you can reuse this script. You can also reuse this script to uh, run a resource estimate update with some extra drill holes. In addition, you can send the IPython notebook to a peer reviewer or your manager, and you can always come back and uh, validate or review the est estimation parameters used uh, for this estimate. So those are one of the basic principles of this uh, software, is uh, reproduci reproducibility and uh, auditability of the results. Oh, okay, uh, thank you very much for uh, watching this uh, video tutorial. If uh, you require some training, open your stat consulting, provide training on um, uh, Pages Lead. Uh, to get news from us, uh, please uh, uh, follow uh, Open Your Stat Consulting in LinkedIn and subscribe to the Open Your Stat um, YouTube channels to see more video demonstration in the future. Thank you very much and hope to see you soon.